All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How is it going? I am Is There No One Else, and the video I'm providing you today is going to be my Stamina Necromancer build for the Elsewhere patch. Uh, it's not just a build, though. We are going to make it a guide. We're going to discuss uh, you know, what I've learned from the Necromancer, go through the changes, and then go through uh, what we're going to change for the Scalebreaker DLC for the Necromancer, because we got some exciting stuff coming along the way. Uh, so that, with that being said, guys, uh, I'm going to dive into each of the skills, the abilities, uh, the gear, provide my explanation, and then at the end we're going to do uh, what I'm going to be wearing next patch, probably. So with that being said, guys, let's dive into it. First thing we're wearing on our front bar, guys, is five-piece Spriggan's Thorn. Uh, Spriggan's is a valuable set. If you guys have been in PvP, you know this is one of the best sets in the game. Two-piece max dam, four-piece weapon damage, five-piece pen. In a heavy armor meta where everybody... Uh, is super tanky. Having as much pen as possible is valuable. This just gives us the most bang for our buck for damage currently. We're running a sharpened maul. I do run double damage health poisons on the front bar. Uh, and we are running all infused weapon damage enchants. Now, uh, you can run max stam with weapon damage. It's not a big difference in overall damage that you will get. Uh, at the end of the day, if you have gold jewelry, infused will give you a little bit more. Uh, if you want the max stam and you want that little added sustain, Basically, a bigger stat pool allows you to sustain more because you have a bigger stat pool. You'll be able to cast a few more abilities. Your sustain will be a little bit better. So if you want to sacrifice the damage, the, the slight amount of damage for an increase in sustain, Robust is fine. It's, it's more than fine. I just went with Infuse because I wanted to you know, melt faces. Uh, whatever you want to do there. The other five piece we're running is Hulking Draugr. Uh, I think I have prismatics on four or five pieces. This is on the PTS. This is not live. Uh, and so I'm going to go through the changes that we have here. But I'm pretty sure I have uh, prismatics on like five pieces. So currently I have it on four. Uh, my health isn't exactly where I want it, but it's not bad. Uh, all in pen, preferably. Uh, but Hulking Draugr is a great set. If you haven't seen it, it's a medium set. Uh, this is a 5-1-1 setup. So we are running, like I said, Hulking Draugr in medium which is Stam, 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 and a shit ton of Stam. This gives us a lot of flat damage. This gives us a lot of sustain because our stat pool is so big. It's just a great set, and it coincides really well with what we're trying to do. Our other two-piece, or monster set where they're running, is Bloodspawn. Bloodspawn is just a great set. I tried a few monster sets. I like Bloodspawn the most. The one-piece stamina recovery is nice for our build. Uh, and then the two-piece, we get increased tankiness with Bloodspawn. We get ulti-gen, which means that we get to cast our ultimates. We have one of the most powerful ultimates in the game, uh, that's great for a Necromancer, so we are going to be wearing Bloodspawn. And then on our back bar, we are running the Black Rose Dual Wield. Uh, Black Rose Dual Wield is very powerful. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it before, it's right here. You do not need to do it on Vet. You can do it on Normal. You can literally run through with one or two other people, get your weapons. Uh, you're going to miss the, the Stamina Recovery bonus if you do it on Normal, but you still get the, the big bonus that matters, the, the major protection for three seconds. So if you guys can't do it on Vet, don't feel bad about it. Just go run it on normal. Get the weapons. Thank me later. Like, it's it's not hard to get. Um, I am running one Decisive and one Nernhound. And the reason we're doing that is because we wanted to buff our healing. And once again, we wanted to buff our ultigen. We have a bunch of damage mitigation with the Black Rose Dual Wield with having major protection. Uh, we get other damage mitigation through being a Necromancer. So we do not need a bunch of resistances. You cannot pen damage mitigation. And so we have that in spades because we're a Necromancer and we're running this. Uh, our Blade Cloak, we're running Quick Cloak. Uh, we get Major Expedition, uh, Major Protection, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, I'll get to it anyways, but we get three major buffs when we activate one skill, which makes this, this dual wield so powerful. So that's what I'm running. Uh, as far as consumables go, guys... I am running Lava Foot Soup and Saltrice. Uh, on the PTS, I'm an Orc. An Orc is just a fine choice. On the Xbox, I am actually a uh, an Imperial. And I'll go through, I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, well, actually, I'll just explain it right now. Uh, Imperial gives you 2,000 max stamina. Uh, it gives you 2,000 max, max health. And it gives you a 3% reduced cost across the board uh, for all abilities. And so uh, you get a little bit more health as uh, an Imperial compared to an Orc, which is fantastic. But on top of that, the Red Diamond passive gives you roughly, it's 330 Magicka, Stamina, and Health Recovery every five seconds. 
uh, when you hit with direct damage. On top of that, it's 3% reduced cost. The 3% reduced cost for an Imperial applies to your magic, stamina, and health abilities, as well as your ultimates. And so what I've found when playing on the Necromancer, I have found that they have a lot of Magicka-based utility skills that are very valuable. I've also found that, obviously, Hexproof and Expunge and Modify are also very valuable and they're health-based. So having that reduced cost so you don't use as much health, having that reduced cost so you don't use as much Magicka is very valuable to me. And so that's why I went Imperial. On top of that, guys, like if you ever want to get into a role-playing guild and you want to be a Necromancer, you obviously have to be Imperial. Like, like Imperial is the Necromancer uh, race. And so you're just really not doing things right if you're not an Imperial. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, um, I like Imperial. I like it quite a bit. I don't think I'm going to change, but Orc is fine. Red Guard would be fine for this specific build. Uh, Wood Elf would be good. Nord would obviously be good because you'd be a little bit more tanky. But but yeah, I went with Imperial, uh, and so that's why my stats are going to be a little bit different than where we are on the PTS. So uh, these are the Orc stats. Um, as far as the skills go, guys, on our back bar, uh, we were on our dual wield bar. We were running Resolving Vigor. Uh, Blade Cloak, not Spell Symmetry. Quick Cloak, not Spell Symmetry. So, uh, Quick Cloak is what activates our Black Rose Dual Wield. Uh, we get Major Evasion, uh, which is reducing damage from area attacks by 25%. We get Major Protection, which is reducing all attacks by 30%. And we get Major Expedition, which is increasing our movement speed by 30%. So, uh, like I said, with activating this one skill, we get three major buffs. It is just a very, very... I mean, it's a great skill, uh, and when you coincide it with these weapons, it makes for a lot of buffs, all with the exact same thing. So it's it's pretty valuable, in my opinion. Uh, I am currently running Blood Craze. Blood Craze is a great damage over time effect, as you guys can see. 19,755 over 10 seconds. When we get to the Scale Breaker DLC, I will be switching this from... Uh, Blood Craze to Soul Splitting Trap. Now, the reason I'm doing this is we're losing uh, an ever so slightly small amount of damage, but this can hit uh, anybody within uh, 8 meters of the original target. So if I cast this on somebody and anybody within 8 meters of them, they also have this dot. It does cost magic up, but like I said, I, I built myself my, my race, I built my Necromancer as an Imperial so that I could use magicka based skills. Uh, this allows me to dot up a bunch of people. That way I don't have to hit a bunch of people with Blood Craze. I'm not saying it's the best way to go. Obviously, Blood Craze gives you a good dot, and it gives you a heal, so that is valuable. Uh, but for outnumbered PvP, I think Soul Splitting Trap is going to be the way to go, and that's where I'm going to fit it on my bar, and I should be able to sustain just fine as an, as an Imperial. If you're an Orc, if you're somebody else, you may just want to run Blood Craze. That's, that's going to have to come down to you. Uh, I am running Summoner's Armor. Uh, the other morph pulls people to you when they hit you with a, you know, direct damage or damage. I can't remember if it's damage over time or not, but essentially they can pull people. You can pull people to you, and you don't want that when you're trying to kite around and like, you know, avoid damage. And so this one uh, reduces the cost of blast bone, skeletal mage, and spirit mender by 15%. So if I activate this, I reduce the cost of my blast bones and my spirit cardium by 15%, which allows me to sustain a little bit better. Our next skill, obviously, is Spirit Guardian. This is one of the most powerful skills, in my opinion, in the Necromancer Toolkit. Uh, it's a great skill. Uh, it, uh, it gives us a small heal. It uh, restores 1928 health every two seconds to not just us, but our allies. Uh, but while it's active, 10% of the damage you take is transferred to the Spirit instead. So this is 10% damage mitigation with this skill. So we have a built-in... Uh, 5-piece 10% damage mitigation. This is Buffer of the Swift 5-piece for a skill. Like, that's essentially what this is, which is fantastic. And so this skill allows us to wear medium because the, the slight amount of resistances that we lose going from heavy to medium is made up for the 10% damage mitigation we get with the skill. And so because Necromancers sometimes have an issue with sustain that I've found, uh, going medium and going two damage sets allows us to like have similar tankiness and survivability but uh, more damage and more sustain. And so that's, that's why I went this route, because of what Spirit Guardian provides. We're just using uh, a great skill on the Necromancer Toolkit in order to, you know, buff our overall skills. As far as our back bar ultimate, we are running Pestilent Colossus. This is one of the best ultimates in the game. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, it does a shit ton of damage. 
and it also gives major vulnerability. Major vulnerability is increases the damage uh, taken by the enemies in the area by 30%. So if you're playing with another person or two people or three people and you cast this on the ground, um, your buddies are going to love you because they're going to be like, holy shit, I just hit like a 25k leap. I hit a 22k leap. I hit a 50, you know, a 20k whip. And it's all because of this. Because you're allowing them to do 30% more damage. It's, it's a strong skill. Uh, it's a strong ultimate. And it's often overlooked because the bash ultimate is just like ruining people's lives right now and people don't realize like how powerful this actually is so uh very useful to have in small scale solo uh in general like across the board like if you're not running the bash ultimate you should be running pestle and colossus it's, it's as simple as that uh, on the front bar uh we will be running i am currently running dawnbreaker smiting uh we'll, we'll put that on really quick uh dawnbreaker smiting big aoe i mean we we know what this is it does a ton of damage i'm running d-swing Blast Bones, Rally, Shuffle, and Reverse Slice. Now, the reason we're running all these, Reverse Slice, uh, Blast Bones is an AoE, Dawn Breaker is an AoE, and so I like to have the AoE splash in order to potentially nuke a few people. Our also, our back bar ultimate, our Pestilent Colossus is AoE, so I like to have that uh, AoE execute. If you want to run Executioner, and that's fine. I, I totally get it, but that's why I went with Reverse Slice. Uh, Shuffle got a big buff for the scale breaker DLC. Currently it's it's kind of expensive. It doesn't give you the major evasion the way you want to, uh, but in scale breaker, it's going to be each piece of meteor armor worn removes and grants immunity to snares and immobilizations for one second. So if we're wearing five medium, when we activate the skill, we have five seconds of immobilizations to immunity and snares, which makes medium armor once again, a very intriguing option for scale breaker. Uh, I try to get away with outrunning this because it's actually pretty expensive right now and elsewhere. Um, and the, the snare immunity isn't nearly as good. We already get major evasion, so that's not a big deal. It's all about the removal of mobilizations and snares. Now, you can run race here. Uh, that, that's an option that I was considering. However, with Summoner's Armor, Spirit Guardian get the, getting the cost increase, and potentially running Soul Splitting Trap, I don't think you can run four magic based skills on a Stamina Necromancer. You can try. You know, I will absolutely try it out on my Imperial because if anybody can do it, an Imperial can. But I don't think it's going to be able to work, uh, and so I will shuffle. Rally, we don't get a heal over time, but we get a very big burst heal for the Scalebreaker DLC. This is going to be very nice heal for medium armor builds. Uh, and then obviously Blast Bones is just AoE, shit ton of damage. You see 17.5 tooltip. Keep in mind I'm wearing a Sharpened Maul, and so my damage here is actually even higher because I have so much pen. And so the tooltip is great. You just saw a 28k heal with Rally. Uh, D-Swing. D-Swing is getting a 10% buff in the Scale Breaker DLC. Uh, so we're, and it's also getting a reduce in the cast time. So instead of it being one second, like it currently is, it's point at eight seconds. And so it's a lot easier to light attack weave. And it, it just seems to land a lot more smoothly. Uh, like I said, 10% da damage buff currently. Uh, my build is around 14,000 D-Swings, so we're going to hit a lot harder uh, in the next patch with D-Swing. And then Dawnbreaker is still the exact same. Um, as far as our CP goes, guys, 51 Warlord, 2 into Siphoner, 56 Tenacity, 56 Mooncalf, 44 Befile. We want to buff our Defile a little bit. We're one of the few classes that have access to Major Defile, and so we want to utilize it. 61 into Tumbling. 43 Blessed, 72 Mastered Arms, 49 Mighty, 36 Piercing, 61 Precise Strikes, and 9 into Thaumaturge. Our uh, setup here is all focused on direct damage. Our D-Swing is going to be direct damage, our Blast Bones, our Ultimate, our Reverse Slice is all direct damage. We only have one dot, and so we're not going to stack a bunch of dots. You can run dot-based Necros, but that's not what this is, and so that's why we're stacking the way we are. 61 Ironclad, 50 Resistant, 43 Hardy, 43 LA Defender. And this is just a test, but I was thinking about throwing a bunch of points into Thick Skin because next patch, dots are going to get increased, and so I think going this route would actually be the better way to go solo. Uh, I will obviously have to test it, but I took the points out of Quick Recovery, and I put them into Thick Skin. I don't know if this is the best way to go, but that was just kind of my initial thought when I was throwing this build together on PTS. So uh, that's what I'm running, guys. Uh, as far as the combinations go, 
you know, you want to keep your buffs up, you want to keep your armor, you want to keep the spirit mender up because it's going to provide healing. Uh, when people come in and they attack you and you're on the defensive, you want to pop your vigor and you want to get your major protection up. That'll allow you to kite around a little bit and it'll allow your vigor ticks to heal you for a good amount. When you're on your front bar, um, your combination that you're going to do is you're going to summon your blast bones, full heavy attack, and a D swing. And typically, you know, it doesn't always work this way because blast bones is drunk as shit. But a full heavy attack plus a D-swing will typically land around the same time. Uh, and either it'll land at the, the same time as your D-swing, or, like I said, like if you start off back here and you cast it, and you do a full heavy and a D-swing, you D-swing and you snare, you uh, CC them, and then the blast bone hits while they're on the ground, and then you hit your ultimate and you kill them. So uh, typically that's how I found works out really well. Uh, so a lot of heavy attack weaving when we summon our blast bones so that we can get that big burst damage. Uh, on top of that, like the 2H, you get 10% more damage when you activate a, a heavy attack. Uh, so I'll pull it up really quickly. When you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, your next direct damage attack used within 7 seconds deals an additional 10% damage. And so uh, blast bones plus heavy attack plus D-Swing is just going to give us 10% more burst than what we're normally running. It all coincides very well together. Uh, it's a nice burst combination that's pretty easy to land if Blast Bones lands. Uh, however, you know, it always it doesn't always do that. We don't necessarily need Blast Bones to land to do a bunch of damage. Like you guys see, we have 16k dual tool tip on D-Swing. We have a 16k Dawnbreaker Smiting, fully buffed, 17474. So a lot of damage right here with these two skills. So we don't need Blast Bones. Although we, we still love him when he lands regardless. Um, as far as changes next patch goes, guys, uh, I would change um, I would change out uh, Spriggans uh, because we are going I am going to go from Dawnbreaker Smiting to Onslaught. And the reason I'm going to Onslaught is this got a huge buff. Uh, so we are going from you know doing AoE splash damage to AoE physical damage that's a lot of burst but instead of it like being affected by resistances this ultimate now ignores the target's resistance and grants you physical and spell penetration for your direct damage attacks equal to the amount ignored from the initial target for 12 seconds so if you guys watch my previous videos let's say you're fighting the average stamina base build okay we have roughly 10k pen with this build sharp and maul uh three to four k and pen in the cp tree and uh, we're running Spriggan. So we have like 10 to 11k pet. If we hit a guy that's actually on the squishier side with 20k resistances and we smack him with Onslaught, we are going to have 30k pen with this build. If we hit somebody with 30 to 35k pen, which is probably what the average player in PvP is wearing, we are going to have 40 to 45k pen. Essentially, Onslaught is now corrosive armor except with burst because we have a huge huge amount of damage that ignores resistances and then on top of that for 12 seconds afterwards all of our direct damage attacks are going to do are going to ignore resistances as well so our d swing our onslaught and our reverse slice will all ignore resistances after we after we activate it um sorry d swing blast bones and reverse slice we're not going to activate it onslaught after we activate it onslaught that doesn't make any sense so as far as front bar sets that we're going to look at uh, Shield Breaker is going to be a very viable option. I don't know if I'm going to run a Maul or Greatsword. Uh, the reason we're looking at Shield Breaker is, is already pretty comparable to Spriggan's. However, the five pieces increase your damage done by 6%. And so uh, Spriggan's will not, the Spriggan's five piece will not help the Onslaught damage. The Shield Breaker uh, will because it's going to buff our tooltip, which will then like buff our overall damage. So it's going to come down to you guys whether or not you want, you know, 12 seconds of more damage or you want the pen all the time and, you know, sacrifice your burst when you activate an ultimate. Uh, it, it's going to come down to what you prefer more, but I'm either going to look at Shield Breaker, I'm going to look at Essence Thief, I'm going to look at Hunting's Rage, uh, maybe Mechanical Acuity because I love it so much, uh, maybe a can Mechanical Acuity or Clever Alchemist. Uh, so I'm going to test all those, uh, but that's the route I'm going to go is a direct damage thing with Onslaught. Uh, Shield Breaker is great. Uh, Essence Thief is going to come down to whether or not you can get light attack weaves off. And honestly, with this type of build, guys, you know, we're already like 
in order to get our burst, we were doing full heavies in order to land our D swing with our uh, blast bones, anyways. So I don't think Essence Thief is going to work very well with this specific type of build. I would much rather run Shield Breaker, Hundings, Acuity, or Clever Alchemist. So uh, those are the changes. Uh, those are the huge buffs that we're getting. Uh, the build that I ran in my video is going to be better in the Scale Breaker DLC. So I'm actually pretty excited for it because it's already you know strong enough in my opinion. I'm going to look at other stuff. Uh, but I like the dual wield 2H because I like being the brawler style with a necro. I feel like if you're up close and personal, like the blast bones doesn't mess up nearly as much as if you're playing ranged and trying to gap close in. Uh, just my preference. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, that's just kind of what I found. So um, that's the end of the build. If you guys have any questions or comments, please provide it in the section below. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.